All right, good day YouTube. My name is Carlos Pistardo and I'm going to show you how to properly plan and uh, install a tankless water heater. So we had some, a lot of drafting of these two units. They were only installed about a year ago, just a little over a year ago, um, October of last year, 2021. And the problem we kept having with these all of a sudden and, the, and these were, were the two previous water heaters that were here forever. Um, and, you know, they were starting to get some rust in them. So uh, I decided to go ahead and switch these out. Had a company come out, um, install these two water heaters for us. It was a pretty expensive job to have a professional plumber come and do it, of course. And um, so they installed this, these two units using the existing vent system. So with these existing vent systems, it ties into the, that's the stack for our fireplace that goes all the way up. Um, I mean, it goes way above the roof line. Um, but all of a sudden, our pilot lights started going out on these units. There was no rhyme or reason, no explanation. It's like, you know what? I mean, we had these, the other units in the same exact spot. And I, I only recall having to relight the pilot one time in uh, seven years that we've been here. So, um, in, in, you know, the, paid a bunch of money for the company that installed it to come back out. You know, they charged me 175 bucks just to let me know they couldn't do anything and there was a drafting issue. So I pretty much had it at that point on spending a bunch of money uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, a company come out and do it. No fault to their own, it is what it is. Prices are high today for labor, and it's hard to get somebody out in the first place. So, um, not necessarily a knock to them, but as a homeowner and somebody who's abled-bodied, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, not worry about the draft system, and uh, make this a lot easier. So that's when I went ahead and ordered the Ream Prestige Series. Um, tankless water heater now a couple of important things to understand and know when you're planning water heaters is you want to make you got to understand this there's two types of basic units okay there's what's called a non-condensing unit and there's what's called a condensing unit so a condensing unit well let me start with a non-condensing unit if you use a non-condensing unit to install in your home Here's the biggest problem you're going to have to face. You're going to have to tie in and stick with the expensive metal, right? And it has the same rules as installing the, this metal, which means it has to be above, you know, the roof line, has to be nowhere near windows, so on and so forth. And if you priced, you know, it's at the end of 2022 right now. If you price this metal, it's extremely expensive, right? Um, and then again, you can still run into draft issues like we're having right now. So my first research, sorry, my first research led me to believe that I don't want to go with a non-condensing unit. By going with a condensing unit, right, this allows you to run two inch PVC off of the unit and your run doesn't have to be very long at all. It can go right out the wall. Now it's important that when you're gonna install this PVC, you have to make sure, right, see the red lettering there? Right, the red lettering means that it's schedule 40 two inch PVC. So it has to be schedule 40, which is for higher pressure. Okay, don't get the black writing. Make sure you get schedule 40, there you go. Um, and then a couple of other things. So it allowed me to plan properly so my plan is to mount the unit right here i'm going to build a frame and a platform for it out of wood so it's not against the the stone right the uh the concrete plus we want a good mounting surface <clears throat> and what have you so after i get this water line cut right here and out of the way and disconnected over here then i'm going to go ahead and build my frame here put it there so first things first, I'm gonna mount the unit, get everything set in place. And then the next thing is I'm going to run my intake 
and my vent right out the sidewall coming up over here and going out of that cubby right there. So as you can see, my run is not going to be very far. And, um, you know, it's, it should be a relatively quick job to get that done. But there's a couple of considerations when you're doing that as well. And I'll cover that in a moment. Okay. So getting back to this unit over here, you have two, all right, two different holes here. So you have to imagine it's going to be facing this way. Okay. So we'll call this the left hole right here. Right. So this left hole over here, two inch hole, this is for your intake. So um, on a condensing unit, and you're doing it in the home, you have to have one hose for intake, and this is for our exhaust, right? This is the carbon monoxide uh, emissions that has to go outside of your home. Now, a very important thing to understand about this intake because we've, I've seen other people make this shortcut before, I'll actually take and just put on a piece uh, with a 90 and inside the house and do the intake from inside the home. And it's not advisable. If you look at the book, you read the instructions, it tells you not to, to do that because it could create negative pressure in the home. The homes today are built pretty tight um, and somewhat air resistant. So if you're going to Put it inside the house it could eventually cause a lot of problems for the water heater shorten the life so don't put your intake inside the home okay you want to plan to have that outside and then the last thing that we have to plan for the first phase of this right is where the pipes are going to come out we have to make sure if there's a window above it it has to be at least 12 inches um, from the window and we have to make sure that the end of the exhaust and the end of the intake, right, where that comes out of the wall, have to be at least 12 inches apart. Okay, so let's go outside first. Let's see where this is gonna come out and we're planning in order. So my marker is going to be this big vent coming outside of the house. And this is a mitigation unit, right, that's designed to get rid of radon and some of the other things. So um, that'll be our mark. All right, let's go outside and check it out. Okay, so we're outside. And here's where that PVC is coming out of the wall for the mitigation unit. So pretty much my exhaust and intake is going to come out down here. And if you see, I've got a window here. My foot is about 12 inches, so I've got plenty, about two feet. So we're going to be okay as far as the rule of making sure it's 12 inches, at least below a window. Um, plus... This window, I mean, rarely ever gets open for any reason whatsoever. Um, so, you know, we're, we're gonna be fine with the installation here. And the nice thing is it's out of the way. Um, yes, this is a walkway, but this isn't going to protrude out very far, but it's out of the way. You know, it's not on any part of the main house where we'd have problems or it would be in the way. So this is gonna work perfect for us, okay? So the next thing to do is We'll get the system mounted and uh, then we'll cut the holes out here, which is gonna be two and a quarter inch holes. So you got a little wiggle room to slide your PVC all the way through. And then we're gonna go ahead and caulk that. Welcome back. So this is my disclaimer, right? I'm not a licensed plumber, not a licensed electrician. Um, so I'm not claiming that this is the exact uh, way to do it per per code or how an actual licensed plumber would install it but i got a lot of my uh education of course from youtube watched a ton of different videos and took some of the best of what i seen and some of the tips and tricks from others and i'm just applying that here so you know i'm not the genius that came up with this it's just a lot of good ideas from watching youtube so that's my disclaimer i'm, I'm not claiming to be a pro here okay Okay, so the next important step on uh, mounting the unit is a couple of things. Number one, go to your manual for your installation guide, and it's going to tell you how to line it up in terms of where the um, bracket is going to sit on the back of the unit, which basically will give you your height. 
<clears throat> and you know they say you can install it either between the studs or on the outside but if you put it on the outside you need to attach it to wood so i know i'm going to mount it here i want to make sure I, I get a good height on it so that's less of pvc that i have to run less that i have to use up All right and another important thing is you want to make sure wherever you're going to mount your tankless water heater that you have access to a plug-in right because you're going to have to plug the unit in so i've got access to this plug-in right here um, i just put a t on it to add a couple more plugs um, so that we can go ahead and do that now another thing to mention is i'm also going to have a recirculating pump on this unit so that you can have instant hot water um, i'll explain more about that later um, and then we're going to have a smart plug that goes in there so I can actually control how the recirculation pump works and when it works. So, so that all will be covered. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and design my frame that's going to mount to this. I'm going to use Tapcon screws to go into the concrete so we have a nice solid attachment so it can support the weight of the tankless water unit. Because this tankless water unit here weighs about 85 pounds. Right, so if you buy, if you, number one, if you buy a tankless unit and it's a no-name brand and it weighs 20 pounds, you're probably starting off on the wrong foot, just saying, okay? Because this has a solid uh, stainless steel heat exchange uh, uh, inside of it and it's warranted for X number of years. All right, so I want to get the standard width of this. Now, it does tell us in the book, right? It does tell us the width, but I'm going to go ahead and get my own measurement just for my own sake so if we measure the unit it looks like it's right at about 18 and a quarter no 18 and a half inches All right so i'm going to take 18 and a half inches and i'm going to add uh another 12 inches on each side so i'm going to make it um you know so i have a foot on each side hangover by the way, this is Hudson, my dog. He feels like he has to be in this presentation. All right, so I'm gonna make it one foot wider on each side. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because when I have my water lines coming down and I have my gas lines coming down, I can go ahead and put clamps on those here and where the wood sticks out here, right? So that it, sh it just looks a lot cleaner and it helps to hold those water lines in place. And just to give you a quick rundown, of what I'm going to use to install. I already told you about the two inch PVC pipe and I'm using PEX line, right? And this is a three quarter inch, three quarter in diameter PEX. Now this does have copper on it now. And I know a lot of people, sorry, I know a lot of people, especially plumbers, you know, will go ahead and sweat in copper to make that run. Well, I hate sweating in copper, right? It sucks, and uh, PEX is so much faster, and this system does allow you to be able to use uh, three-quarter inch PEX, which is great. So um, on my specific unit, and this is important to understand yours, right, it'll tell you what the limits are, the minimums are, so I could not reduce this down to a half-inch PEX. It has to stay at three-quarter inch, which just happens to be what my copper is right three quarter inch and the reason is because the rate of flow going into the system they want that to be proper to in order for the tankless water heater to function properly okay um and then another just another quick jump before we mount this and things to consider is how you're gonna reroute your pipes right so this looks like a, a mess for somebody who maybe hasn't done this before it can look like something that's kind of scary and challenging, but really it's not because we've got this primary line here, right? That's coming in. So this is our cold water and it's nice that I got a valve here so I can go ahead and start getting this stuff out of the way before I cut off the water, all right? So really all this line here is unnecessary. All this line here up to about right here is not necessary. And all this piping here is not necessary either. 
So I know right out of the gate that I'm going to cut this copper line here, right? Because I'm going to have to get this water line out of the way in order to get my system mounted. I'm going to cut it here after I cut the water off, of course. And then I just basically bought a shark bite. So it's a shark bite elbow, right? It's a 90 that goes like this. And it's just a pressure uh, fitting. So it just pops right on. You've got to follow in the instructions. Pop that right on there. And then I can transfer right transition right over to my PVC. Okay, which is very, very simple. And shock brights are awesome. And I've never had one leak. Okay. So here, elbow, we're going to go up. We're going to go across. And the only, where I have to tie back in is I'm going to have to put a, a T up here. Okay. So this T, I'll have the line coming in one coming down and then back to the bottom of the unit so that's going to be my cold water in okay but then i also have to continue the run over here and tie back into this cold water right because that run comes all the way across feeds all this stuff which is going to be obsolete but in essence continues to go up and feed other parts of the house so i'm going to have to tie back into this line which i'll cut it up higher up there and then that'll that'll just get another elbow right uh a gator and uh, a shark bite sorry um so you'll press onto that switch it back over to pvc or pex run across and then it'll tie into the t over here okay so we know cold water is going to be taken care of no problem then we have to look at the hot water so we know that these water heaters right are feeding from here this main line here so I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff here so basically what I'll do is I'll cut right here cut that off eliminate all the garbage put a shark bite on here a 90 going back to the wall I'll put another 90 on their pecs right and then that'll come across just like the kind of the other pipe did but on this side that's gonna drop down and that's going to attach to the bottom of the unit okay so we know we have to do that and all other things considered for hot water that's the only place i have to tie back in just that one spot okay just unlike the cold where i have to tie it in to two different pipes okay so make sure you've got a good plan ahead of time on how you're going to reroute your plumbing um, decide if you're going to use PEX, which is, well, everybody will tell you so much easier to work with. Or if you just don't believe in PEX for whatever other reason, or you think copper is just going to do a much better job for you, then you need to learn how to sweat copper in and put it in. Again, I know how to do it, but I don't want to waste the sweat equity in doing it. Okay, so that's the plan and the layout, right? And then when everything's in, these two water heaters, I'll drain them relieve the pressure get them the heck out of here i'm gonna i'm gonna resell them because they're pretty much brand new all right get my money back um and then this space will be a lot more open okay and you'll just see the water heater back there on the wall okay so that is the plan ahead of time we're gonna see if everything works out and lines up the way i'm thinking okay so what i did for my mount here as you can see i cut left side the right side I've got the top header that's going to tie in there and then the bottom it's going to tie in there and i put one stringer in the middle this is just to ensure the integrity of this mount that i'm going to put in i'm just going to you know uh, tie these in with screws just lag them in screw them in to the uh, side just toenail them sorry couldn't think of the word i'm going to toenail them in here uh toenail it up here and around just to get it secure um but don't worry about that because when i mount this to that brick wall i'm going to put tap count screws in there so all of this will be nice and tight and mounted and will hold the entire weight nicely and evenly for that water heater um, so that it's going to stay up there okay so here is my little frame support mount here that i lagged into the concrete um, which by the way, really sucks. <laughs> if you have a situation like mine where you're mounting to concrete, like I had to, um, 
just a couple of words of advice make sure you have one of these bad boys here right not not a cordless power pack because uh you'll burn that sucker out in, not, in no time and you won't get anywhere but uh it's going to take a lot of shoulder strength and upper neck strength and it'll wear you out and uh i just had the proper fitting to uh screw in these tap tapcon screws but now i mean this thing is you know it's not going anywhere um so now that i have that i made a nice little panel that i cut out to cover that just for aesthetics um and to not have a nice flat mounting surface for the tankless water heater so next i'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> add the cover on there and uh go ahead and mount the hot water heater um, on the clips so after i get the cover mounted i'm going to take my bracket here mount it up there at the top make sure it's level use my level make sure it's level um, and then that's how we hang the tankless water heater and then i will screw the bottom on down here um, so that it is nice and firm and solid sitting on this little platform all right welcome back so this is where i'm at so far and i'll just kind of walk you through where i'm at at this point so as you can see i've got my box mounted it looks nice the backboard looks really nice and it's sitting nice and flush against that concrete over there right and uh what i did in the meantime is if you recall i had this big pipe that was going across here and tied into this water heater so i went ahead and rerouted it i just put a gator bite 90 there ran some pecs ran it across put a t on there so i went ahead and brought my line down and then put a ball valve on it so that it's ready to be hooked up <clears throat> to the tankless and then i went ahead and just rerouted it popped it right back into my water heater existing water heater so that i can still use this until we're ready to go 100 percent life now the next thing you want to do is start dry fitting your pvc so if we trace this um, exhaust line now it's important you want to do a slight angle up all the way up until it goes out of the wall now you might think well what if rain or something gets in there and it's going to go back to the unit we don't want to do that well actually that's how it's supposed to be done so you're going to angle up and away a little bit small drop doesn't have to be huge just enough so if water or condensation forms in there it can go back into the unit and that's what it's designed to do now as you can see i used my makeshift crutch because i'm fancy here to go ahead and uh prop this up while it's dry fitted all right so i've got it all set up here hooks around goes around that pipe goes back up and now i'm ready to punch a hole out of the wall with a two inch two and a half inch hole saw so that i can put my exhaust outside there so make sure you do a good dry fit so i'm going to go ahead finish doing my dry fit get everything measured properly uh, drill my holes to the wall cut the holes through the wall get everything set and everything glued in so when i come back that'll be glued in and we'll be ready to move to the next step okay we're back and i almost made a boo-boo as you recall earlier i said i was going to run one pipe that way and run that way well good thing is and this is why you have to read your instructions if you see right here it says locate the intake and exhaust right no more than 24 inches apart so less than 12 no more than 24 the reason i don't know no more than 24 i don't know since they have two different pipes coming in but in any case i wanted to do it right so i went ahead and cut out my vacuum pvc line that was coming uh, we have a household vacuum system that we never use but i'll reroute it later for aesthetics but I went ahead and ran the intake pipe behind right ran them both out 
and out the wall. So this one I'll elbow left or to the right from the outside and then put my down, down drop there. And then this one I'll elbow that way and uh, also put an elbow on that. So I'll have at least my 12 inches, but no more than 24 inches apart. I'll go ahead and finish the termination outside. I'll show you guys that. And then next will be to finish running the hot water line and uh, get that in place. I'll get everything assembled down here. I'll also be installing a recirculating pump. So you'll get to see that, how all that works. It's really nifty and very inexpensive, actually. This gives you instant on-demand water. I'll show you how that works. So for now, I'll go ahead and run the water line, get everything in place. And then the last thing will be to go ahead and reroute that gas line there, get that all set. Um, as of right now, I want to keep my working hot water heaters, right? before I go live here so you know you never know what's going to happen during installation so I don't want us to be stuck a couple days without hot water so I'll come back once I've got the ends terminated outside and the hot water heater line routed all right I'm back so let me show you what I did so I got everything ran I got straps to secure the the PVC properly I just use the uh, zip ties temporarily so for you HVAC and plumber guys out there before you tear me up I'm going to hang them properly everything's out terminated siliconed in I'll show you what I did on the outside in a moment but everything I rerouted all the water lines so those are all good to go water's on right now so there's no leaks everything looks great Last thing I got is to run the gas line down through here and under there, and we're good to go. Water heaters are already disconnected. I just have to drain those and get them out of here. So I'll show you what I did to the outside. So here we go. Here's the outside. I put a nice little plate on there, painted it. I need to touch up the PVC. And it is recommended that you paint PVC because UV rays can break down the PVC quicker than normal so I'll get another coat of uh, gray on there so right here is my exhaust it's coming out and my intake is kind of tucked back behind here um, and this is about 15 inches apart from end to end and it's required to be at least 12 inches so we're good there and it's at least 12 inches below the window so eventually, if maybe, I don't know, I don't know if I have to or not, but if I have any problems at all with the, you know, the exhaust intake, then I could always run another small piece going out that way and maybe just angled up that way, but we should be fine. So there's the termination on the outside. Okay, here it is. Everything's been ran. No leaks. Now, when you're putting your fittings together for your water, big word of advice. Make sure you're using Teflon tape, three wraps. And on top of that, I also put the joint compound. And that ensures that you don't have any leaks. And it'll last you a long time. As you can see here for the gas, I rerouted my gas. And then I hooked in CSST, make sure your local code allows you to do so and this particular unit said it's okay to use CSST so I just hooked on up there right with CSST it's nice and flexible so I could do one solid run anchored it in a little bit of loop gap there just in case ever needed to uh, make an adjustment in the future I'm on there now this unit is just about ready to roll I've got the gas valve shut off for now and uh, last thing I'm going to install since I did install a recirculating pump here you can buy these for $80 on Amazon this one is called a Kohler flow k-o-l-a-r-f-l-o <clears throat> important note there's an arrow right there 
you want to make sure that arrow is going in the direction of the flow. Okay, since the flow is going out into the rest of my house, that's the direction the arrow needs to go. Okay, so what a recirculating pump does is it makes sure that you have on demand heat within seconds versus wasting water and waiting one to two minutes and sometimes for the water to travel from here up to your bathroom, let's say if it's two stories up, which mine is. So a, ton time, a lot of people will complain, well, I've got this on-demand water heater, but it still takes a long time for my hot water to get to my um, faucet. So by installing this recirculating pump, right, this is gonna work in correlation with this sensor valve kit. So the sensor valve kit replaces these two lines here. It'll tell you which end is hot, which end is cold. You hook onto here, and then you put your existing water lines onto here. There is a 3 8 inch um, adapter if you have 3 8 If you have a uh, half inch, you can go ahead and just screw right on directly to here. So once this is hooked up, the way this is going to work is once this water temperature falls below a certain degrees, it opens up this valve inside of here and the hot water will flow through through the cold side. So it recirculates that water until hot water hits it. It'll turn the unit on because the unit senses water is being used. And then the hot water, once it hits here and it starts to heat up, it'll close that valve and keep hot water retained here. Over time, as it starts to drop again, it'll open that back up and it'll kick on your water heater. Now, one tip that I picked up from somebody else, which is really cool, I'm going to install this Wi-Fi smart socket. It comes in a set of four, pretty cheap again on Amazon. And I will connect it to my phone so I can set up times of the day that I want this to actually turn on the pump so that it's not constantly recirculating every 15, 20 minutes. That's gonna help you save on the unit and of course energy. So using the sensor valve kit in correlation with the Wi-Fi so I can schedule what times of the day I want it on versus when I want it off. And that's gonna recirculate the hot water through the home until it hits that valve. You know, you wanna put this on the furthest sink in your house. So it's priming the line all the way up to the sink. Okay, to that furthest point. All right, so once I get this hooked up, we're going to go ahead and fire up the unit and uh, see how it works. All right, we're good to go. Diverter valve is installed. I'm not going to mess with this right at this moment, but I will get that going. Put in my three way plug here. So I've got my pump, and I've got my unit. And here we go. Okay, here we go. Everything's on. Everything's up and running. I ran into a glitch at first because um, I was counting on this plug in here to work. Not quite sure what's going on with it. But my uh, <clears throat> hot water heater didn't like it, so I installed a extension cord for now for the pump and the hot water heater. I'll figure that out later. But it's up, it's running, everything's working fantastic. It's set to the highest maximum, at least what they set it at for 120. Recirculating pump is working great. Um, get hot water in under 30 seconds upstairs which is better than waiting one to two minutes, what I've heard people uh, complain about before in the past. Um, one last thing, there is a secret, I guess, that was shared on how to get this hotter if you want it hotter. Now, 120 degrees, in my opinion, is pretty daggone hot. I don't need it any hotter than that, but some gals like it hotter. So if you want to take it higher, then the preset um, degrees, you just push and hold these two buttons here, and then you'll see it blink, and then you can go ahead and take it up, I believe, all the way to 140. 
but I just could never imagine having water that hot. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. This is how to, or how I installed my ream tankless gas water heater. And it's time to get rid of these two big boys, sell them on Marketplace, and uh, get, get a little more space back here. So, have a great day.